Good evening, hello and welcome to this edition of Let's Talk Law. I'm Anusha Soni. Today we talk about the much controversial issue of religious conversions in India. Now, is it merely a propaganda, quote-unquote, created by some people peddling the hate narrative? Or is it some kind of silent conspiracy against the majority community? As the other side claims, what is the reality of religious conversions in India? Is there data to back the claims of the term called love jihad, quote unquote? Do we have laws in place to stop or regulate religious conversion in India? More importantly, where does the Indian constitution stand on all these critical issues? Now, before we begin answering these questions one by one, I want us to go back to the case of Hadia or Akhila. Back in 2017, a 21-year-old woman, Hadia, who had earlier converted to Islam, was married off with the help of one NGO to a Muslim boy. The parents of Hadia moved the Kerala High Court and cited a conspiracy under which their daughter was allegedly brainwashed, converted to Islam and then married off. The Kerala High Court, exercising its extraordinary powers, put the girl, a major girl who was more than 18 years old, in the custody of her parents and annulled her marriage. Her husband, Shafin Jahan, moved the Supreme Court. The drama doesn't stop there. The union government cited a larger conspiracy to convert Hindu girls to Islam, loosely referring to the term love jihad. None other than the Premier Investigation Agency, NIA, was called in to submit a report. Nothing came much out of that NIA report and Hadia was freed from the so-called custody. But the case of Hadia is a reminder of the complex realities in which the debate operates around religious conversions in India. Now, there are two responses that come when we discuss the issue of religious conversions. Either it's a complete denial or some unsubstantiated conspiracy claims that are floated. If you choose complete denial, that there's nothing called organized religious conversion in India, then let me take you back in time. About nine states across India, including Orissa, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, have laws that regulate religious conversion. A lot of these laws enacted at the state level, for example in Madhya Pradesh and Orissa, were brought during the rule of different political parties back in the 1960s. So this is not a new debate that has been brought in. Religious conversions and the attempts to change the demography is a concern that predates 1947. It's not a new issue, as I said. Most of these laws present at the state level not only make forceful conversion an offence, which means that any conversion that happens against the will of the person, but these laws also bar conversion that happened due to any kind of inducement or allurement. The two key words to watch out for. Now, they mean monetary gains that may be promised or any other material benefits. Now, subsequent amendments have been brought in by various states, including Madhya Pradesh or the law in Uttar Pradesh. It even includes marriage under the umbrella of inducements. A marriage merely for the purpose of conversion is an offence. Punishment can include fine or imprisonment between three to five years. Now, many argue that this is a free country. Anyone and everyone has the right to convert and practice faith of their own choice. And law cannot interfere in matters of personal choices pertaining to one's own faith. In modern independent India, conversions are not happening under the threat or fear of persecution. A point well made. But what if conversions are done on the pretext of imparting better education or promising better material life? What if the conversions are done among the most underprivileged sections of the society? promising material benefits. Is that inducement? Is that allurement? Is that really a free choice that has been exercised? Now the notion of free choice is operating in a flawed reality. Caste-based discrimination, lack of basic health care and education facilities by the government make the most underprivileged sections more vulnerable. Let's come to the right to propagate one's religion, Article 25. The right to propagate one's religion does not mean the right to convert. Yes, Article 25 of the Indian Constitution gives power to each individual to practice their faith, freedom of conscience. But does the freedom of religion or right to propagate one's religion, it does not mean the right to convert. The Supreme Court has affirmed that position. Let's now come to the word love jihad. The word has no place in any law, in any statute book, 
but you would hear this very often you would hear this word very often in the socio political discourse of our country love jihad essentially implies some kind of systematic and organized attempt to convert girls from any faith to islam through marriage there's no data there's no record or any organized study to back this claim the hadia case is a reminder how there was no data to prove empirically speaking the existence of love jihad but conversions to faith like islam and christianity for marriage is not unknown the supreme court is hearing a pil on this matter the center is collating data on the issue and there's a demand for a law at the national level for regulating religious conversions if i were to conclude i would say that there's no hard data on forceful religious conversions at the national level one of the reasons is that to prove so called monetary inducements in courts becomes very tricky a lot of hearsay and hence conviction will be very rare under these statutes often missions or charities carrying these conversion activities were very tacitly the famous niyogi commission report is a testament to that fact you must google and read about it the center must carry out a detailed study at the national level whether the present day conversions are happening out of free will or due to some kind of inducements any claims of a pattern or a conspiracy must be backed by evidence for them to be dealt by the teeth of law thanks for watching